Hello, this is Charlene Carla. Welcome to NASA. This is my Narcissistic Abuse Survivor Autobiography, where I share my testimony to help you along your healing journey. Now today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be discussing hard lessons we've had to learn, especially if you've you've been in a narcissistic relationship, you are still in a toxic relationship, you've learned some lessons, and you know, when you completely escape, like some of us, then you will look back and say, thank God, I learned that lesson. Um, I'm not a teacher in the school system, but I'm a teacher, minister of the gospel, okay? I love to teach the word of God. And so, I try to be a good student as well. So when I learn something, I'm like, okay, let me let me get this in my brain, get this in my spirit so I don't forget it. Let me be a good student. Um, let me be a good steward of the word that I hear, that I learn. Again, thank God for streaming pastors who stream their, their, their services live on Sunday. Some of us don't have cars yet. Um, so I get to watch like literally like three services each Sunday when I'm awake. Um, but I, I really, really try to, okay, let me, all right, two plus two is four. All right, it's not five, it's four. Let me get this in my brain. Like, you know, when if I'm driving, get a rental car or something, I'm going somewhere and I make a wrong turn that's gonna be the last time I make that wrong turn because I'm gonna say, okay, now I know. Don't turn right, turn left. Now I know. So today we're gonna be talking about, you know, lessons learned and let's, let's learn them quicker, faster, sooner, rather than later so you guys don't get stuck in a, an abusive relationship for almost three years like i did okay okay so my shirt today says unbothered beautiful black queen on the front um i actually got this shirt when i was with cookie monster uh one of my birthday gifts to myself this was the birthday after the first birthday with him that he tried to destroy remember that oh day don't even remember the name of that video because that event was so dramatic like our entire relationship so we're just gonna read one quick super short scripture in psalm 119 omg this is like one of my favorite psalms ever y'all know i love king david you know i love the psalms but psalm 119 it's super long and super awesome but this is one of the scriptures i have to say a lot um because I, again, I'm trying to be a good student as well as a good teacher. Okay, so Psalm 119, verse 71, and it reads, It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Okay, David's like, I've been afflicted, okay? We know many, many, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all, right? But David's like, okay, I've been afflicted, but that's good for me. Because I've been afflicted, I've learned your statutes. Okay, so again, don't don't beat yourself up um, for, again, stumbling into this, uh, uh, into a toxic relationship or, you know, opening the door for the enemy to usher you into a toxic relationship. Um, it's okay, <laughs> okay? You've been afflicted. You feel like you've been afflicted by this relationship. Thank God, because now you've learned, now you can learn God's statutes and what he is really saying to you and I, I told you guys, one of the, the best le lessons that I learned, um, especially with number two, was, you know, that we serve a jealous God. So let's not put people, places, or things before God, because he'll be like, let me, let me take that away, since you're focusing on that instead of me. Okay, all right. So 
I'm oh, OMG again. <laughs> um, this and this this message just kind of like popped into my spirit like today because learning lessons. Remember I said a couple of videos ago. Uh, I think we were talking about witches at work and stuff like that. I think I did two videos about, you know, narcissists, it, you know, in the workplace. Um, and so, again, I, tr I tried, I really tried to learn my lessons, you know, along the way. And God's like, can you, again, can you stop slamming doors at the office? Can you stop slamming the phone down at the office? Can you stop acting like you're not? Christian, can you do that, please? And again, it took me, I don't know how many years to finally get to that point where I was just like, I literally went like this. My last job, I went like this in front of my boss, like, I'm just here to work. Can I work, please? Like, I have work to do. So to, can, you, can you leave me alone? Like, I'm trying not to cuss you out. <laughs> and I've never cussed out a boss. I have in my brain, but not out loud, okay? But I've acted out of my flesh this flesh this dirt oh my goodness acted out of it okay being upset and 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 this is what I do I tell myself that shit falls one to another um I I try to justify justify my anger and justify my frustration by saying well this is you know what's happening isn't fair and it's not just and it's not justice and that's not right and this shouldn't happen and they shouldn't say that and they shouldn't do this and so I have every right to be mad and God's like oh, let's bring it down a few notches lady okay calm down because again remember of everything is in the word people offenses will come offenses are gonna come remember that woe unto them from who who they come from, okay? Woe unto the person that's trying to offend you. But get another scripture, and it might even be in Psalm 119, um, that, you know, great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. If it's not in 119, please tell me in the comments, you Bible scholars, where that's at. Great peace. I'm trying to live in peace again. I'm trying to live in peace, people. Bible even says, live peaceably. <laughs> with one another okay so part of that piece is like not not letting those offenses stick to you and and, and get inside of you and oh my goodness just recently hmm, found myself getting frustrated and mad and sad and I'm crying and I'm angry and I'm like well this person did this and this person said this and this person is doing this or not doing this and that's upsetting me and it's not right and they're wrong so I have every right again to be mad and God's still like don't let the sun go down upon your wrath thank you and God's still like mm, sent a message again through YouTube Watching service. Love your enemies. I was like, how, how do I do that again? Lord? <laughs> like, seriously. How, how do I do that? But I'm, I'm trying to learn. Lord, you know, I'm really, really trying to learn. Uh, some more lessons. <laughs> Just the other day, I have to tell you, I have to confess my faults one to another. Um, had a dream. Y'all know, I'm a dreamer. Had a dream. Uh, that I had the opportunity, I'll say, to like walk up this, I mean, high, high, steep walkway. I didn't know what was at the end of it, but it was just like in front of me. And I could have just walked up this thing. But I just looked at it like, ooh, that's really high. That's really steep. It's a little bit scary. And I'm tired right now. I don't even have the strength. I, I thought that in my dream, I'm thinking to myself, I don't have the strength to go up this thing right now or today. And I just like walked around it. Okay. Like I just, in my dream. And I woke up. I said, oh Lord, forgive me. I should have just went up. I should have just asked you to help me go up. I should have just said, Lord, give me the strength to go up. I'm tired, but I'm going to crawl up I should have did that 
God forgive me. And I literally said, and God is so, he's so gracious. He loves us so much. We are his children, okay? And I said, God, give me another chance. <laughs> like, give me another dream where I'm going up and I'm gonna go up this time, Lord. Give me another chance. How about he gave me another chance? Did, did I learn my lesson? And I wasn't afflicted because I didn't go up the first time. But I kind of felt like, man, I could have went up. Like, God only knows what was up there. I could have went up because it was step before me. And so, but God honors my prayer. And like hours later, not even days or weeks later, hours later, I have another dream. And now there's stairs. The other one was just like a, you know, straight, steep thing walkway now i have stairs in front of me but now there it's a crowd it's like almost like like at an arena like outdoor stadium but again it's steep and it's high and it's stairs this time i don't i don't do stairs i have a treadmill not a stair master write that down so i look at the stairs again and i'm just like i i don't I don't feel like trying to go up this thing. And again, it looks scary because it's steep and it's high. Never mind. I'll just, let me try to find another way to go up. And I woke up again and I said, Lord, I should have learned my lesson. I thought I learned my lesson. And I asked you for another chance. You gave me another chance and I still didn't go up. Oh, and I know God is in heaven like, did she ask for another chance? And I gave her another chance and she still didn't do it. What? What's happening? So, <laughs> it's good for me that I've been afflicted because I'm going to learn God's statutes. But I have because of that first dream though. I like had to grab my strong concordance because there was some other stuff that happened after, after I didn't go up. And so I said, let me, let me dig deeper into this. And let me see what I may have missed out on in my dream. Like, because this, again, yeah, my spirit man doesn't sleep, okay? But I, I have dreams, like, literally almost every night. Like, even, not even night. Every time I go to sleep, I can take a two-hour nap on my beautiful Chase Lounge and still have a dream, right? So I pay attention to them, and I try to write them down, and I try to look them up and let me see what this means and let me see what God is telling me and speaking to me god speaks to us in many different ways y'all know that so i want to know <laughs> trying to learn my lesson but i i had learned one thing i did learn uh woman of god church i mean years ago probably almost 20 years ago when, like when i first got to florida and first got into my first non-denominational church and prayer room and woman of god was like hey when you know usually how you are in your dreams is how you are in real life so if you're afraid to do something in your dream you're probably afraid to do something in real life so you need to go to sleep with the mindset of i'm not going to be afraid i'm not going to do this i'm not going to do that and and that has worked for me honestly in the past like I would have bad dreams and and I would try to call the police in the dreams and I would try to call my mom in the dreams and all this type of stuff. And I had to stop doing that because it, it wasn't working. Cops weren't coming. Mom wasn't coming. So I had to start saying before I go see, okay, if, if something happens, I'm not calling the cops. I'm not calling my mom. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to kill the bug myself. I'm going to handle this situation myself. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to run away from the robbers. I'm going to just face them head on and fight them and do whatever I got to do. So I learned that lesson. So my dreams have changed. I, I have seen the difference. There's a lot of dreams I used to have that I don't have anymore because I go to bed with a different mindset. What are you talking about? Mad in the mind last week. So uh, again, I guess this going up stuff. And I've gone up in, in, in different situations. Like I've, I've actually climbed up like a ladder, like a rope before with no issues and thought about going down and said, oh, no, going down would be worse than continuing to go up. So I'm going to work on this up thing and prayerfully I get, oh, I'm going up next time, Lord. Okay, Jesus' name. Make it get into the statutes. See how I can do that. Um, but there's, there's, 
instances um, with, you know, especially cooking on stuff. Mm. You think you've learned your lesson. You know, I told you, remember the boomerang video? About the going back and forth and going back, especially, ooh wee, number two as well. That going back and forth and going back and forth and get out, come back, get out, come back. And you, you should be learning lessons in between that get out, come back stage. Sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes it takes two or three years to learn those lessons. But don't stay in a toxic relationship any longer than you have to because you're refusing to learn a lesson or you don't feel like learning a lesson um, because you're just, you're so afflicted. But you're afflicted, but you're not learning the statutes. And God's like, okay, come to me, ask me what happened and why so you can learn from your mistakes, okay? All right, so we need to start doing that. Uh, again, remember, I had I had plenty of opportunities to escape Cookie Monster. I really did, especially <laughs> before we ended up cohabitating in sin, right? Um, I, I had a chance. Because, again, remember, I wasn't even living in my own place. Didn't have a car, nothing. So he wouldn't, you know would have found me if I didn't run away from that one place that he had been to one time. Remember, I was renting a room out in the wilderness. Whole other video. I had I had an opportunity to, you know, after Fright Nights, well, yeah, one and two, Fright Nights one and two, I had that opportunity to, I'm done. When I called the cops on him the first time, I could have been done. I should have learned that lesson. I should have learned God's statutes so I wouldn't have prolonged. I just prolonged my pain. I was not unbothered. I was very bothered. Very bothered for the next two and a half years that I was with him, okay? And didn't have to be. If I had learned my lesson, if I had learned God's statutes, and I remember back up a little bit. When I was out in the wilderness um, for a while after I lost my house and remember, stayed for a friend with a while, for a while and moved in, rented a room from perfect strangers for another um, two and a half years, which I mean, at that time just flew by because it's a blur to me. It really, really is. But I remember being upset, being mad, being frustrated again. And I keep doing that um, because I was in the wilderness. And I was alone. I mean, I was alone, okay? 45 minutes from everybody, from civilization. Then remember when then, got, then on top of that, God says, give me your car. So I really can't go nowhere and do nothing. I couldn't even go to church without my car, right? So I was not happy. Um, and I was completely single at that point. That was before Cookie Monster. I was single, so I was really a member marriage was that Asherah pole in front of me and I'm worshiping marriage and I'm and I'm just longing to be loved so badly right and just going to sleep like oh I wish I'm trying to imagine somebody holding me while I'm asleep and I go oh I just wish somebody was here with me and I oh I hate laying in this bed by myself and God's like I am love and I love you and I know you love me so can you trust me? And can that be enough? And to know that, you know, one day you could actually have love in the earth, real life, agape, unconditional love. Like, can you see that? Okay. So, but I was upset of that. I was in the wilderness. And God had, I learned. I was afflicted. I felt afflicted. But I learned his statutes. And God said, okay, you want to know why you're in the wilderness? Go to the Old Testament, go to Deuteronomy, go to Exodus and find out why the children of Israel were in the wilderness. How they ended up there, but what I was doing while they were there, you know, God's like, I had testing these people, make sure they're going to, you know, let me see if they're going to 
obey me or no, okay? But even during that time of 40 years again, walking around the wilderness for no reason, because they could have just went straight in to the promised land, right? But what was it? Fear. They were afraid, oh, where's grasshoppers, blah, blah, blah. There's giants in the land and up. But they're bringing back fruit, you know, grapes this big and stuff like that. But God said, even though they're in the wilderness and they're acting like, oh my goodness, all we're doing is eating this manna. Oh, this is so boring, blah, blah, blah. God still said, you, your clothes didn't wear out. Your shoes didn't wear out. Like, you were fine. Nobody came and attacked you and killed you. you you're walking around outside, putting up tents. Nobody bothered you. Nobody was getting eaten by wild animals. He didn't say that. They were chilling, okay, in the wilderness. And so God's like, and then, hello, where did Jesus go as soon as he was baptized? It's my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And he was led of the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. Okay. So if you're in the wilderness right now, learn God's statutes. See what his word is saying about your situation, about the reason you're in the wilderness and what God is trying to do in you and through you while you're there. It's not a punishment. It's really not. Being here by myself, I'm like, mm, but it's not a punishment. Again, I'm enjoying the peace. I'm enjoying the quiet. I can do whatever I want, <laughs> go wherever I want. I'm enjoying this time, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm holding on to this time. I'm like, okay, Lord, thank you for the time that I have you alone. It's just me and you. Let's talk. Like, let's get down to business. Let's see what's still in me that is not of you. Let's burn that out with the Holy Ghost fire. Let Instead of just sitting around saying, I'm afflicted, I'm afflicted, I'm afflicted. It is good for me that I've been afflicted because now I have learned his statutes, okay? There's, how many Bible stories do we have about people who did not, hmm, start with the knots, did not learn their lesson? Pharaoh. Come on. <laughs> okay. When God's like, let my people go. How many plagues? Did it do 10, 12 plagues? For him to say, oh, now that all the firstborn are dead. Now you can go. Bye. People are like, D did you not see? His own people are like, dude, there's frogs hopping around. There's locusts. There's blood in the river. There's hail. There People in Goshen, Israelites are chilling. This is, they're not being punished because of, you know, your sins, all right? So learn, learn, learn a lesson faster. Even remember when uh, Jacob was uh, trying to escape, he literally had to escape Laban, okay, with his wives and his children and all this type of stuff. And Laban's like, what's happening? But Laban also said, because I talked to him in a dream too. Pay attention to your dreams, people. And the band was like, I have learned that God has blessed me because of you, Jacob. He said, I learned that by experience. That's what he said. He said, I've learned by experience. Let, let's learn by experience. We have some negative experiences from these narcissistic entities. Let's kind of hmm, push to the back burner the, the good times when they're acting nice and they're acting loving and they're love bombing you to try to keep you, to try to get you, to try to, you know, make you stay. But put those, because again, that's not the real them, that's the fake them, remember? So push that to the side and let's let's learn by experience of when they're yelling and screaming at you for no reason. When they're cussing you out for no reason. When they're putting their hands on you, Jesus, for no reason. Or punching holes in the wall for no reason. Let's learn by experience. Let, let's get into the word and say, 
I don't, I don't think that abuse is in the word of God. I don't think that that's okay. This is the real reality. This is reality TV. Okay. When they're having an episode and they're acting a fool and they're acting crazy and they're, and you got to call the cops on them. That's reality. The sweetness, the sweet, cute, beautiful cards that they send. The, the chocolate candy for Valentine's Day that they send and the big teddy bear that they give you for your birthday. That, that's not real. So learn those lessons faster again, sooner than later. So you don't have to be stuck in an unhealthy relationship. Again, that could could mean the end of you. Like, literally. Okay? I've even had to learn. I'm going to go to a not so deep subject. But I had to learn about my hair. Okay? All right? 11 years I've been growing my, my locks, right? So, you see the, see the little baby locks? They, they're right here, right? But my hair, the rest of my hair ends like right here, okay? I had to learn. <laughs> Lesson. So I used to color my hair like 24-7 I was coloring my hair. And beautiful, beautiful red color. And um, I didn't know. I didn't know had to learn I didn't know you know how to take care of my hair I'm thinking oh I have locks I can just wake up and go I can just go sleep and go I wasn't wearing a bonnet <laughs> to cover my hair at night I didn't have a satin pillowcase to sleep on um I wasn't moisturizing my hair every day I wasn't oiling my scalp I wasn't doing anything I was just like I have locks I have locks I'm straight I'm cool my hair is gorgeous hello thank you lord locks are biblical Thank you, Lord. But I didn't know, especially because my hair was colored, especially. I didn't know that I had to take even more care of my hair, right? So I just let it grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And finally, I stopped. I'm serious, black now. I stopped dyeing my hair because I said, okay, let me let my hair be, you know, just whatever color it wants to be. And so then I called myself trying to be healthy with my hair, trying to have healthy hair. I wasn't watching the YouTube videos like I am now. Praise God. Shout out to all you lock people, lock -ticians that, you know, share your secrets and educate everybody. Because everybody's hair is different. Everybody's lock journey is different, right? But it took me how many years? Almost 11 years to realize, oops, I should have been taking care of my hair seven years ago when it was colored because now it's broken in, in some places and and that's fine i should you know again i don't i don't cry over spilled milk i'm like i spilled the milk let's clean it up <laughs> so i'm like let me let me get a you know protective style here once in a while let me not put tension on the edges let me okay i'm trying not to be too too frizzy all right let me so now, now, now I've learned. Now I've learned because I was afflicted. I was afflicted. I was afflicted. So the lessons that we learn in every aspect of life, just learn the lesson and just say, God, it's good that I've learned this lesson. Again, I'm not going to go down the wrong street anymore. I'm going to take care of my hair now. I'm not going to end up and stay in another toxic relationship. I've learned my lesson. Thank you, Jesus, for your statutes. Okay? I've been afflicted. And that was good for me. Again, God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. That's what Joseph said. That's why he was able to, to make it to survive the pit, the, 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 the prison and slavery. He was able to survive that, to be promoted. Remember the video, remember it's darkest before the dawn because there's pain before promotion. So learn your lessons as early as possible, as quickly as possible. 
get into the word of God. Ask God. He said, ask, seek, knock, call unto me and I will answer you. Like, ask him, okay, how, how did I get here? And what do I need to do to get out? And then when you're out, say, and what was the lesson I was supposed to learn from that? What was in me that I need to get out of me still? Or what, you know, what inner child issue did I have? Was there a, 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 a daddy issue and a, a mother wound? And what, what was the issue, remember? I'm just now figuring out, oh, it's because my dad was a narcissist and he didn't love me. That's why I've been fiending for love like Jodeci <laughs> for 50 years. Okay, thank you God for telling me. Now I know. Now I can learn your statutes and now I can learn my lesson and not end up in that situation again. So just ask God and he will show you and he will help you and you will learn your lesson. <laughs> in Jesus name okay okay thank you guys so much for watching this video for liking and sharing this video thank you for being on my channel and for subscribing to my channel and hitting that notification bell on my channel again if you have any questions comments prayer requests ideas topics you want me to discuss questions you have about any part of my life because you know I'll tell y'all I have no problem with that you can always reach me on my website pickupthysword.com and all my social media links are in the channel description you guys be blessed and you be safe